Good night, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tuesday Night Bible Study. I am prepping to speak from quite a bit of scriptures tonight, because as you can see, we want to talk about the Word of God or the Bible. And um, it is an area of controversy sometimes, but it is the very truth that we use to go forward in our lives knowing more about God. So we want to talk about it a little bit tonight. And from there, you know, move ahead and uh, learn more about why it is important to study God's word. But as usual, before we get into all of that, we're going to have a little bit of a song and then a prayer. And then we get right into Tuesday night Bible study. Shall we pray to the Lord? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen? Amen. The righteous run into it and they are saved. He's a mighty fortress. Yes. And if there are any issues, then he is a bridge over troubled waters and his name is to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Good night, everybody, and welcome back to Tuesday Night Bible Study. Just took a quick praise break for those who are joining. Welcome. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for giving us another opportunity to reflect on your word and praise and worship you. We thank you so much that we can even have the Bible, which went through its own uh, you know, bits of history. To get to where it is right now assist us as we discuss it to bring reverence to the nature of what it represents and also to trust it as you have said it is what you have given us to have a sure and safe part on this journey of life amen good night everybody how are we all doing i am as ever the brother johnny jeremy and alcock and we are tuned into Tuesday night Bible study. Of course, as usual, please note that we are streaming both on Facebook and YouTube. I'm not sure where you're tuning in from, but if you are on either channel, usually there is a live stream chat to the right where you can type in comments or ask some questions in relation to what's happening. You can also, if you're on your, that's usually if you're on your laptop or your computer, if you're on your phone, it's usually below here. Note there are some um information in relation to the church streaming at the bottom so if you need to get in touch with us for any reason telephone or email or even on our social media that is the method we also have a whatsapp group where all the church notices are sent and if you're not part of it please where have you been join us man and uh, send us a message so we can get in touch with you to add you there also know that we stream every tuesday night at 7 30 p.m for tuesday night bible study and we also stream on Sundays in the morning at 9 a.m. on our Facebook page for normal worship service. We also have other uh, bits of uh, things that happen during the course of the week. Auxiliaries meet between Fridays and Sundays, but we also have Saturday um, morning uh, prayer and fasting. So any of those things that you need to catch or listen to, whether it's church school for the young people or women or men's fellowship or, or uh, prayers and fasting in the morning on Saturdays, please do join those things and uh, become immersed in the things of God. All protocols observed. Uh, let us look at this thing about the word of God. You know, God's word is so vast and, and huge. In my house, I have a varying sets of Bibles. And uh, I have a RSV, a Revised Standard Version. I had it from sometime when I was in high school, when I used to study religious education. And I have another Bible that I have from when I was in primary school. And it's a King James Version. And I got another Bible the other day, which is a new international version from a friend of ours at church. And the thing about it is the Bible has gone through a long history. When Moses, who wrote the first known books, the Pentateuch, from Genesis to uh, Deuteronomy, started off writing some of these things, uh, I'm pretty sure he didn't envision that over about 3,000 years later, we would still be reading some of his words and we are getting instructions from God and how to live our lives the, the way that we do. When Jesus himself came on earth, he quoted a lot from some of the things in the New Testament. We have to understand that the Old Testament and the New Testament all point to one thing, which is Jesus Christ, our Messiah, who was come for salvation to bring us back from the separation that we had from sin, from the initial obedience, disobedience, sorry, from Adam and Eve, so that we can live with him in eternity. That is basically the story of the Bible, right? But it has its contours and its ups and downs. And uh, I, I encourage you, if you do not have uh, an app, you can get a Bible app from many of the other things on the Google Store or the App Store and use it to, to go through some of the things. And I usually have these concordances in there. And just how I mentioned, I have different versions of the Bible. Know that there are other different versions as well. Know that there are also different uh, trans, not just versions, but translations. So 
in Jamaica, we speak uh, Jamaican Creole, which of course has its dialect because of uh, where we came from. And they also have a Jamaican Bible, right? In the, in the New Testament version. But there are other languages, French, uh, Spanish, and so forth and so forth. But the original parts of the Bible came from Aramaic and Hebrew in the, the Old Testament especially, and Greek in the New Testament. And then the scholars, especially through Tyndale and then eventually um, the scholars who King James appointed to write the first major English Bible, put together these texts for us so that we have 66 books, depending on the type that you use, because if you're not using the Reformed canon, there are some additional books that some tend to put in. They put together all these books so that we can have them and understand more about God's nature and who he represents. So I just gave you an abridged version of how the Bible came to be, its different versions, its translations. But from the time of King David, which we're about to read, the psalmists would look at how God had his word already planted there so that we can understand some things about who we are and what was possible. It says in Psalm 119, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers. For I meditate on your statutes. I hope you're seeing the uh, screen still and still hearing my voice. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil part so that I may obey your word, right? And it continues and says, I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. So the psalmist here is trying to show you how the very nature of God was to show some things in relation to how you should really live your lives. And once you start to do it, you yourself who may be mentored or taught by others can even get uh, a bit more instruction more than they because you're getting it from the one who has all source and wisdom, Jesus Christ himself. And if it is that we have somebody who has all knowledge and all truths and all glory and all power and all understanding and wisdom, He's the one that we should be listening to. That's all that the psalmist is saying here. And it is through his precepts and his understandings of the things of the world and how we should live our lives through him to come to some understanding of the betterment of who we are, then it is that we're going to have a good life. Then it is that we're going to have a sure life. And some of the things of this world will come to be what it needs to be. Now, there was a man who was in the family line of Jesus, the son of Isaac, who was kind of a little bit of a swindler, a, a cheater was the, the term of his name. You know what I'm talking about. His name is Jacob. And at a point when, a little bit before he was to meet his brother, Esau, who he had uh, kind of stolen his birthright from, by uh, he and his mother swindling and uh, reaching to a point where they, they got the birthright from the elder brother, he has this encounter with an angel in the night. Let me project it. And starts to talk about some things with him about who he was and where he was headed. And this is where his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. So let me read it. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. And he had sent them across the stream. He sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not appoint, overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. 
The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him, and as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his limp. And he continues to speak on how there was a bit of a myth surrounding the, the ear and the socket with where the where the limp of Jacob was and where they don't eat from there from animals because of reverence to the man who saw God and uh, the angel of God kind of wrenched his hip as he was wrestling with him and cut and gave him a limp. But the story proceeds there because the angel of God was trying to get through to Jacob to find out if he had reached a point where he understood more about who he was and where he had been and where he could be going. God had some things in store for Jacob so that along his path line, um, timeline, his path would lead him once he followed God and passed down some of the same statutes that we've been talking about to his children. To allow the very birthing of the Savior to come from his inheritance, right? But he was going along in his life very badly before this. And we don't hear nothing much bad about Jacob after this point. Where he kind of makes restitution with his brother after this. He starts to lead his family along and, uh, uh, you know, gets them in line in terms of what you know, God's laws are, they themselves were a little bit messed up because he started to favor the one, two sons who were from the mother who he loved the most. But otherwise, it went along into some pathway where he, as the elder, started to mature and teach the others about some of the things of God. And you have to come to a point. You have to figure out what who am I in God? What is my inheritance in Him? What am I supposed to represent for Him? And once you realize that you are an ambassador for God, the Apostle Paul said this. Once you realize that you are His workmanship, the Apostle Paul again said this. Once you realize that you are redeemed, that you are His child, that you are a son of God, the Apostle John said this in John chapter 1 then you must know that if you are his disciple, God said, then you have to follow his word. My sheep hear my voice, God said. If you are not following the voice of God, what would be the point of your life as a disciple, as a follower of God? What would be the point if, you know, we get all of this knowledge here from the Bible and we decide to go our own way to do our own thing and then when the, the issues of life comes and the consequences of sin we worry and we wonder. It is because we did not follow what God said we should do. It is there for our instruction. We will read that soon from Timothy. Or rather, the Apostle Paul's letter or epistle to his protege, Timothy. That's what it's for. It is not for us to just read and then say we know some Bible scriptures. It is not for us to, to study, you know, like a scholar at Oxford. And know that we know some parts of it that are from Hebrew. And we quote some Hebrew and we quote some Greek. It is so it's supposed to seep into your heart. That's why it's called the inspired word. Because men of God, just like us, who were touched by the Holy Spirit, were inspired to write some things that had some meaning for God. And then when it is passed down the line through those who were in the Hebrew tradition, and all the world can now see it. And they look and they start to figure out more about themselves and who God is. It is supposed to come back into their eyes and inspire them. And then they are supposed to become changed and transformed. It says in Hebrews chapter 10, you know, or Romans, sorry, chapter 10, 10 
that faith is something that um, comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So if it is that we don't have this word of God that eventually is preached and the gospel of God goes forth, it will not allow the change and the transformation to come into people's hearts so that they can know God and do the right things in life. That's what the word of God is for. It is not just as a mouthpiece or something to put on your nightstand as a celebration of the fact that you have a Bible. The great Woodrow Crowell had a study once where he studied and showed that at least one or two or so Bibles was in every household in, in the United States. I'm pretty sure it's similar in many of the developed world. But in terms of the Bible engagement, in terms of engagement in the word to understand it and uh, the follow the things of it, it was fairly low. And this was because we always have it, but we don't pick it up to read it. And that's not good. That's why we have the Bible studies. That's why we go through and look at some of the things that are there so that we can know what it is that is there. And we don't falter and do the same problems that the people of Israel had that is written throughout the pages of the Bible as instructions to us so we can do better. Jeremiah 31 says this, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the kingdoms of Israel and Judah with the offspring of people and of animals, just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow, destroy, and bring disaster. So I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. In those days, people will no longer say, The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be set on edge. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I, will make, I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. So you see the pathway. God through his instructions and words from Moses did some things. And then the prophets came and started to declare the things of God. But then he says, something magical, I guess he could say, would happen. And this is the power of the Holy Spirit. That a new covenant would be birthed. A new testament. That where Jesus said, I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. This is from the Apostle John's writings. Where he will nestle himself so much in your heart. That you will start to get a fuller revelation of who he is. You will start to get inspiration to know that it is not because of things that have happened in your past. You are not a bondage of the sins of your past. What? Or the sins of your forefathers before you. You have the energy and the power. You have the inspired word to direct you. You have vision to move forward and do some things better than before. And use God's word to light a path, it says somewhere else in Psalm 119. A light onto your path. Something that can allow your feet to move steadfastly along the way. Don't worry so much about the things of the past and what sins you have committed. Once you come into God, you will start by the very nature of you going into him deeply to develop and mature so much that the word will, will just come out of your pores. It will start to marinate so much in you, you know, like you, you put some chicken together and start to, to cook it. But before you cook it, you have to season it up so that it comes to the right flavoring of what you need for your Sunday dinner. 
if it is that we do not come to this understanding eventually of what the word of God represents and what it can do in your lives, we will always sit bereft, doubting it, unsure of our own selves, when the very truth was given to us for us to study and apply to move into our lives with great sureness and vigor and energy and peace and love and goodness and kindness and self-control and patience. Watch what the Apostle Paul says to his protege Timothy. Reading from verse 14 of the third chapter of 2 Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of. Because you know those from whom you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture, said the Apostle Paul, is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Wow. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in the view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with some doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. evangelist discharge all the duties of your ministry. If we are not sure of this word, man, you will hear all sorts of things that will come that is not truth and will go counter to it. That is what the world does. There's no denying that. We see all of the issues and the chaos that is in the world and the oxymoron of the fact that God is trying to push through good things and allow us to come together and make this life something where everybody has a place. But then there are elements that come in that makes the world evil and messed up. Anybody who looks on the world knows this. The problem is that we forget that the truth was given to us so that we can use it as instruction and reproof and correction. You who know the word best, good night, everybody. Please do put in your comments if you have any. Should use that to allow the very nature of God to be revealed. Don't doubt yourself or what you know from the word. The world will always come against it. That's the whole point. Because the world is following the prince of the power of the air. And he, as Jesus said, was a liar from the beginning. So if you have the truth, and the prince has lies, what do you think is going to happen to you when you go out into the world? You will be applauded and given some awards and uh, loved? Of course not. You will be derided and uh, sometimes even hated. And even lies will be told of you. And just as Jesus said, you will be mocked and brought before people to give an account for who you are. But you know who you are. You show what the real truth and the justice of life is, which comes from the word of God. And you preach that, as the Apostle Paul says, in season and out of season. And you let them know what God is about. Now, there was a certain wither, Jesus said. And this is our last scripture for the night. Thank you all for coming on. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. 
And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? Will it be that when the real judge comes, when the one who has all power and authority, who knows all things and has the real truth and all wisdom and understanding, when he comes, will he find faith on the earth? That is a question that we won't see until the ending, right? But I implore you, you who know God's truth, I gave you a long history at the beginning. If you missed it, you can and end it when this um, session ends and go back to the beginning of where the Bible came from and how it came to be into different translations and versions. Know that it, it is truth. And whatever it is else that comes to you, allow it to feed into your mind and your heart, as Jeremiah says, and inspire you to do what is right and do the just and merciful thing as Amos and Micah would cry out in those Old Testament times. Let righteousness flow down like rivers. And let the very justice of God be shown. Because God's truth has been given to us. But we just have to heed it. Don't just read it. Heed what it says. Follow it. And apply it to your lives. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for giving us your inspired word. Help us, dear God, to listen to it and apply it in our lives. And even when people come against it, we allow it to do what it does. Speaking its word in season and out of season, rebuking and correcting and giving its instruction so that mercy and justice can go forth and your truth can reign forever. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We are the Hellshire United Church, a congregation of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. This is our Facebook and our uh, YouTube page. It may be streaming elsewhere or shared in other places, but do note that you can reach us in any other ways that is listed below there. As usual, we'll have a quick closing song and then we'll let you know what's coming up next for Tuesday night Bible study. Soon come in a minute. And 
this time and it's my pants Secretly said I will live my eyes to the fields from whence my heaven and earth my heaven comes from you so I know this love and heavy and the sand and I can't secretly say I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence my heaven comes my heaven is from you carry me indeed. Let us read from the words of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 2. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you violence, but you do not save. That is one of the scriptures that we're going to use next week when we talk about the, uh, the theme, when we cry for help. Um, and that will be next week, Tuesday, the 25th. Excuse the, the wording that was there. It's actually the 25th. Today is the 20. Today is the 18th. Next week will be the um, 25th. Until then, brothers and sisters, please do have a great rest of your evening and allow yourself to be immersed in God's word. Remember, it's history. That it is truth. And it, it just didn't pop up out of the atmosphere uh, or some men just write it for fun's sake it is god's word and i want you to reflect on it so much that you know it is where you must turn when you have your issues in life and to get the truth for your life allow yourself to also use it to not only correct yourself but help others who are around you who need to have a short path for their lives blessings and peace Remember, the inspired word of God has been sent forth. Use it as you may and apply it for your lives. Amen. Amen.